What does his text mean? So frustrating. Maybe he's just not that I into me. She really likes I've me. always been bad How at flirting. How can I flirting? get her attention? I'm ready for marriage. I just want somebody to share my life. Is this a relationship going anywhere? Modern love made simple. This is Dates and Mates with Damona Hoffman. Hello, lovers. Welcome to another action-packed episode of Dates and Mates. I'm your host, certified dating coach, Demona Hoffman. And we are here to demystify modern love. You know Valentine's Day is around the corner. I don't have to tell you. So I'm dedicating this episode to one of the top problems that people come to me with in love, especially around this time. Finding love, dating while busy, being in a relationship while busy. I'll just call it like DWB. RWB, okay? In this world where text and emails are flying at a mile a minute and DMs are constantly on the slide. I know I get them. I know you're getting them too. And oh yeah, you're working multiple jobs. You're juggling many activities. Maybe you also have kids. How the heck do you have time to focus on love? Maybe some of you have felt this from the other side. You're ready to focus on love, but the person you meet or the person you with seems distracted. If so, this episode is for you. And joining me today as my co-host is Marquise Olison. You've heard him on a previous episode, The Mind of Men, one of our top episodes, by the way, Marquise. Hey. He is back to share his dating experiences with us, and he's brought friends. He's brought <laughs> more people who will speak to their experience of dating while busy or being in a relationship while busy in just a moment. So, But please, 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 let's give big smooches to Marquise. <laughs> that smooch is back, ladies. Okay, Marquise, we're going to hit the headlines together. Mm -hmm. And I know you want to know what the headlines are. We'll talk about how to spark joy in your relationship. We'll talk about a celebrity ex that's making things messy. Plus, 25 opening lines for dating apps. People are always asking me, they're always asking me, like, what's, what's a good opening line? What, what can you say to attract someone? I know there, that, uh, I don't know if I can say the word Aziz Ansari in dating mm -hmm. apps, but but he had a great opening line in Master of None, like, "Hey, I'm going to I'm going to Whole Foods. Can I pick something up for you?" <laughs> um, it's a great line, but I'll tell you some other great ones according to Bustle in just a minute. And plus, we have your questions in Technically Dating, including the pros and cons of women making the first move and. Should you link your social media accounts to your Twitter? Mm. This is oh, this is a really hot topic, and it's going to be a hot show. Producer Leah is in the producing chair. Hi, guys. You ready for this? I'm ready for it. Let's do it. D's dating dish. Does your relationship bring you joy? <laughs> Marie Kondo will help you figure that out. Now, you all know it's January, and January is actually divorce month. This mm. is the time of year when... The highest number of divorces are filed. People are like, I, I can't do another holiday season with you. Mm -hmm. I can't go through this. I don't want to be a part of your family anymore. I just can't take the stress. Let's start a new year clean. Whatever it is, it's divorce month. And so when we're talking about cleaning, I don't know if you've been binge watching Tidying Up. I read the book. This is what's cute to me. Mm -hmm. I read the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up with mm -hmm. Marie Kondo. She now has this series, Tidying Up, on Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's real cute to me to see everyone going through this tidying up process mm -hmm. when I did it two years ago, and I'm back where I started. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's nice that everybody's rediscovering it. But the, the thing that connects for my Dates and Mates listeners mm -hmm. is that cleaning the clutter can actually improve your relationship. Mm -hmm. Clutter is actually linked to higher rates of divorce. When people are in cluttered environments, they tend to, to look for problems mm -hmm. and they can't think straight and they feel overwhelmed. And so that's one of the great things about Marie Kondo's philosophy. She's like, if it doesn't spark joy, get rid of it. So if your man don't spark joy for you, get rid of him. What do you think about this whole clutter theory? Marquise, do you think that clearing the clutter can help you get clarity in your relationship? I absolutely believe that clearing the clutter can give you clarity in your relationship because a relationship is just times and routine. And if you don't have any time in your routine, then how in the heck are you going to have time for another person? So if you clear out some of the spaces in your life that aren't serving you, you can have that time to go and find someone that does. So you're saying from the point of view of someone single, mm -hmm. like that 
opens up the possibility of you to bring in love oh, yeah. through your clutter. If you got a dirty house, this is an old saying that a uh, woman once told me, you know, if your house is so filthy that she don't want to take her shoes off, what makes you think she going to take her clothes off? <laughs> That's true, but I'll say not many men that I dated, including my husband, uh, not many of them were that that tidy. And most of the time, I felt a little bit gross to sleep over. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. And so whenever I see clutter in my house, I can't get too mad. One, because I like clean... Th I think there's a difference between cleanliness and clutter. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit cluttery. Like papers, mm -hmm. letter, like mail, mm -hmm. it, it, gets all, mm -hmm. it gets all stuck. But I don't like dirtiness. But I have to remember, who is the man that I married? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to change him. If he was cluttery before, or if he left dirty dishes in the sink before, I can't expect him to change now. And I think that's one of the problems, is that people expect the relationship to change once they get married or once mm -hmm. they commit to each other. They think that person can can become someone that they're not. Mm -hmm. And also, like, I can't have expectations for him that are greater than the expectations I have for myself. We did do the mm -hmm. spark joy method, and we are still <laughs> living in a cluttered house. But I'll tell you one little tip. This is from a, a study that came out a few months ago that housework is a major factor in the satisfaction of wives. Like, mm -hmm. we all know. Mm -hmm. Women have made strides in the workplace. We're mm -hmm. all working. You're all working. It costs a lot to live. So we're in a two, two income household. Mm -hmm. And yet the women are still the ones doing the majority of the housework. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work all day. And then we're coming home and cleaning the house and cooking for the mm -hmm. kids and doing all of that, that stuff. Mm -hmm. So tip for the guys, tip for the married men here or men in a relationship, mm -hmm. picking up a little bit of the housework actually will get you laid more. And that is a fact. Well, I, I, can I hop in on that for like half a second? Half a, a second. As a dude, I want to have a clean house that I'd love to, but I understand that as clean as I have it, you're going to still want a cleaner. So if I do all this effort to clean it up and it ain't in front of you, I'm still going to have to clean some stuff when you're there. So I just leave it messy so that when you get there, you feel like I did something when I do something. So we can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Seth likes to tell me, though, when he's done something, he's just like, mm -hmm. like, I just do this stuff. But like, I get a report when I come home now because mm -hmm. he's on hiatus. And so he's like, just so you know, I took the dog to the vet. Just so you know, I did the dishes. It's mm -hmm. like, OK, I, I'm sorry. I'm all out of stickers. I gave those all to the kids. But <laughs> but See, you want a cookie like, or something? Yeah, yeah, that's what he wants is a cookie. That's, you know, <laughs> as he's saying, I took the dog. What kind now. of cookie? Though? Can I get a cookie? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Well, one person who is not getting a cookie from Sierra anymore is Future. <laughs> Future and Sierra, they have a son together. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, Sierra is married to Russell Wilson. And things have just been popping off here on Twitter. Um, apparently, Future's been criticizing their relationship mm -hmm. very publicly. And he's just like inserting himself into the situation again. Oh, yeah. and it, as if he doesn't realize that they haven't been together for like four or five years. <laughs> well, this is the thing. Uh, he done been out in the world. He done checked out everything and he done figured out, oh, that Sierra was the lick. How did I let Russell Wilson <laughs> just get that? Okay, I got to go get her back. I got to do what I got to do to get my baby but back. But this is totally not the way. Criticizing him is not is not going to get them back. Mm -hmm. And also, they do have baby future. They named their <laughs> child future. Mm -hmm. Future. <laughs> Maybe it should have been past. I don't know. Maybe they could have taken a page out of the Kardashian, <laughs> yeah, like, like Kardashian West name book. Like, those kids have the craziest. They thing. named their child future because it was a gift. And they wanted it to be they, in the presence. Because they had no future. Oh, yeah. They were like, <laughs> like, this is the, they I don't see no future, future in your front. <laughs> so, but it gets messy. It gets messy mm -hmm. when you have kids mm -hmm. with someone and then you bring someone else into their life. Mm -hmm. He was saying recently that he's really upset that he didn't get to meet Russell before mm -hmm. baby future met Russell. Mm -hmm. And Sierra's like, but I tried. Because you know he was probably, he was cock blocking that the whole oh, time. Oh, yeah. Right. Because he was like the whole time, it, it's not, it, what he's holding out is trying to have his cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. So he was like, she was like, hey, why don't you meet my new boo? Because, you know, you and I ain't getting together. And he's probably like, nah, nah, you know what? Nah, nah, you know. <laughs> and then she would try to set it up and then he'd be like, 
Oh, I got a tour that day. Oh, uh, you know, I got a doctor's appointment. <laughs> and so she like, fine, I'm going to have my son meet this star quarterback that's a Super Bowl champion. And future, you are in my past. Right? Well, that happened. That happened. Hopefully he will... Stay in the past, but he also has to stay in their future because they have baby future mm -hmm. together. So well, you gotta be careful who you procreate with because mm -hmm. um, that is, becomes the person that you will have in your life forever. Well, well the thing is, uh, either way it go, that kid is locked on solid because it's like Russell Wilson, Future, and Ciara. Either way that kid goes, he's got good parents. He's got good parents. Well, if you are looking for love, maybe you're trying to find a relationship like the beautiful one that Russell and Sierra share, and you're on dating apps, what do you say? Like, what are the pickup lines? Because it's different. You can't say, come here often, come to Bumble often. You have to be a little bit more clever about it now. And Bustle made it super easy for us by giving us 25 pickup lines that you can use on dating apps. So Marquise <laughs> and Leah, I want to run through some of these and, and get your opinion on how good you think they are. So number one, what's your theme song? What's your theme song? I used to say, what's your passion? But what's your theme song is kind of cute, but I don't know that a lot of people are walking around with their theme song in their head. What's your theme mm -hmm. song? Well, mine right now is Walk It, Talk It by Migos, but it changes every day. <laughs> um, or actually, my real theme song is Running Man by Ali Gabriel, because I've been jamming that bad boy. <laughs> Do you pick, I pick a theme song for the year, and I'm like, this is my focus for the year. Do you ever do, you ever do that, or I am I weird? No, that's I mean, a really great idea. Mutually I feel like whenever I somebody like asks me like a question like this or like, what's your favorite artist? I go into like a panic mode. Like, oh my God, I need to pick I a favorite know. artist. I have to have a good one. Yeah. <laughs> what's your thing? So? Yeah. And then if you say the wrong thing, because you know, people get judgy about music. If you say the wrong thing, then they're like, mm -mm. Yeah. next, <laughs> swipe left. <laughs> well, this is I the think thing. it's a good question, but it's just, it induces panic for okay. me. Okay. How about well, this one? Wait. Oh, you wanted to add something? Yeah, because there's if, 25. Oh, no, I know. But <laughs> if somebody's asked, this is one of those things where this is real good. If somebody's asking you what your favorite artist is, just be honest. Because they want to know. Because if you say the wrong thing and it don't match, good. But Filtering you can out. know. You cannot be judging someone based on their musical taste. If you're swiping based on musical taste, and I know they integrated Spotify in at one point, this is that's the wrong criteria to use to choose your mate. It's the absolute wrong criteria. Well, no, I'm saying, yes, you were right. I know you're not wrong. doing that. I'm talking to everybody else because I know people are left swiping because they're like, he said Nickelback. Ew. Well, these Ew. people are figuring out <laughs> what is okay, the you music can left swipe on I'm going to do <laughs> some stuff to later on tonight because that's what the theme song music actually no, is stop it C come on stop it marquise this is a family show how about this one cheese pepperoni or hawaiian in la they'd Ooh. be like gluten-free <laughs> vegan <laughs> vegan gluten-free <laughs> can i have a cauliflower crust please <laughs> i actually love a cauliflower crust thank you very much see and then we would be off to the races mm -hmm. we'd be talking and that would be the good mm -hmm. good opening so okay that one checks out now I, I, I wonder about this one. What's the worst date you've ever been on? Mine involved blah, 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 blah. Mm -mm. Too much too soon, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Well, get somebody in a good mood. What's the best date you've been on? Like, I want to know what's been your worst date. I'll ask you about that on the date so I know not to do that for date number two. Because if I tell you, if I figure out the things that you don't like, I can just rule those out. But if you got a cafe that you had a terrible date in and that's my favorite cafe, that's going to be a challenge if I don't know that. Yeah. Also, it opens you up for like red flags. Like, oh, that's a worse date that you've ever been on. Like, what if they do that on my date too? I just don't think you should be talking about past yeah. dates <laughs> with your future, your future <laughs> date or your baby future. Okay. You can read all of the pickup lines on Bustle. Uh, take them with a grain of salt. Some are good. Some are mm -hmm. great. Some are not so good. I'll let you be the judge. But I want to move into our discussion for the day because I have two fabulous guests mm -hmm. that are joining me, in addition to Marquise, of course. And we are going to talk about, we're going to talk about DWB, dating while busy. We're going to talk about RWB, relationship while busy, so we can get this stuff sorted out mm -hmm. before Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. So, on the line with us, LaPresa King is here. She is a business development manager and a single mom of three. 
She is currently working on launching a lingerie line. Ladies and gentlemen, please give big smooches to LaPresa King. Thank you. Thank you. We also have, oh, two, dope, you got a dope play. We also have Dwayne Colbert. He is a, oh, by the way, no relation to Steven, so as far as we know. <laughs> He's a writer, director, actor, and comedian who's appeared on on uh, Tosh.0, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Basket, Silicon Valley, love that show, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He's been married for five years to a very busy lady. Both LaPresa and Dwayne are busy AF. So how does dating and a relationship fit in when you're living a life that's already packed with other things? Let's get big smooches first to Dwayne Colbert. I was waiting on my smooches. Yeah, I, <laughs> there go. I, okay. I almost missed your smooches. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so let's, LaPresa. Walk us through, what does a typical day look like for you? I am up by five, uh, getting the kids up, and probably out the house by 7.30. And I'm home from work at about 7.30, dealing with Atlanta traffic. And I come in, and I feed them, and I read for 15 minutes, and I go to bed. So not a lot of room for dating in that scenario. Nope. And on weekends, I'm doing football games and cheerleading practice and, yeah, you are, name it. Are there any single dads over there? <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot, actually. Well, well, wait, hold on. Have you ever talked to any of them? Mm -hmm. <sighs> not really. No. <laughs> Well, that is the starting yeah. point, my friend. <laughs> Beginning the conversation. Point. Did you did you not see uh, Bad Moms? I did see Bad Moms. Okay, so there's hope. There's hope. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but the reality is getting out of your normal cycle is the first step. Because I, a lot of times people will say to me, I'll, I'll find a relationship when the time is right, or I'll, I hope I'll just come into contact with that person. They'll just cross my path mm -hmm. and it will happen. Mm -hmm. But I've just found that you really have to put in the effort, especially when you have a life as packed as yours. And I mm -hmm. totally relate as, as a mom as well. That's, that's my schedule as well. Mm -hmm. You have to make the time for the things that are important. So what would you say is the priority of dating in your life right now? Oh, it's so far at the bottom of the food chain. You know, here's what I do. I wake up and I pray that I remember to comb my hair and look cute and go outside. <laughs> and hopefully somebody will fall in right in with what I'm doing in life. I know, but prayer that, doesn't doesn't do it all. It, yeah, Action no, isn't it doesn't. Next step. It doesn't. It hasn't worked yet. So. Okay, hold tight, <laughs> hold tight. We're gonna get you some more advice, but I want to kick it over to Dwayne. So Dwayne, you're married. Mm -hmm. You're busy. busy. You, I, I read your bot. You have like six jobs. I got to get it in. <laughs> At least. Okay. <laughs> so, and your wife's busy. What's yeah. a typical day look like for you? Uh, depends on the day, uh, but it's full of uh, either rehearsals with uh, a group that I might be rehearsing with uh, that I'm directing or coaching in some way. Mm -hmm. well, um, I, know, I know comedians, they don't get up early though. Uh, well, some of us do. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that's trying to get it in. <laughs> uh, no, I'll probably get up about 6.30 or so every morning. I'm uh, just trying to see what the day is going to be like. You know, that's always, what, no matter what it's going to be like, as far as how many groups I might be working with or what project I might be working on, it will might get interrupted by a last-minute appointment or mm -hmm. audition or meeting. Um, so I always have to be prepared for that. that Invitation <laughs> to the Dates and Mates show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things that come what up. What you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of try to, you know, there is structure to it, but uh, it feels like I'm constantly being pulled one way or the other. Um, and it's different. It, I never catch a rhythm because uh, it changes week to week, mm -hmm. being on the group and the project and the people. So uh, I noticed you like, didn't yeah, mention wind. your wife in any of that. <laughs> Not exactly. Um, so yeah, when it, do you two have time together? You know, FaceTime is really great. You know, if I'm in between something mm. and in the car, I will FaceTime her or call her or we text or something like that. But um, you do take advantage oftentimes of someone being there. And that's tough. Uh, even me saying it right now is, a, is an acknowledgement. Like, you got to make sure you remember there's someone there who is not just waking up next to you, but uh, you love and care for, and mm -hmm. she loves and cares for you. So you got to work on that. Because mm -hmm. uh, in the absence of that, man, you're just roommates, and who wants that? You know, I had roommates. Mm -hmm. I have a communication question. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to flip the script, and you're going to mm -hmm. give me some advice, yeah. Marquise, as well. My husband is not a 
He's not a uh, texter. He's not really a phone person mm-hmm. at all. I, I feel his pain. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm yeah. not a phone person. Mm-hmm. Up top. Yeah. But I'm he never not, has yeah. been. I'm he, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like our first date, but before our first date, I asked him to call me so I could hear his voice and make sure he wasn't a serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a serial killer sounds like. But, <laughs> he, he did, yeah. he <laughs> but you know, he, he was like always really, the conversations were always really short. Mm-hmm. And then when we'd been dating for a while, I said, Hey, you should call me to check in. And he was like, what do you mean? I'm like, just, just check in like yeah. you do with your wife. Yeah. And so then he called me one day at work and I said, Oh, Hey, what's up? He said, nothing. You told me to <laughs> call you to check in. That's so I'm doing man. that. And I was yeah. like, Oh gosh, I have to reprogram. I have to reprogram this, this relationship robot here. But we've gotten a good, pretty good. But do you bring up rhythm. a good point? Because uh, but we're great. I didn't start so off that first way of face to face. You know, I've, that was over time. Well, let me give you my question. Yes, yes. He does not respond to texts, and mm-hmm. he does not proactively send texts. Like, there's no, there's no. Um, I mean, I'm not going to be sending like sext anyway. Mm-hmm. You will. That is one thing you will never see mm-hmm. when the when the Apple Photos vault opens up. You will not my see God. anything from me. Him. But. It's all business. Mm-hmm. So how did you get into the routine of FaceTiming and keeping that alive? Because you said that wasn't your normal Yeah, that, that definitely thing. took the training you're talking about, you know, training your husband robot to do. I call it man training, but man some training. men yeah, take Yeah, it was, it was a man training because was, I was oblivious to that. So she, tra- she, she said, hey, honey, thing. you got to FaceTime me like, during like, the day. Yeah. But that was maybe that was it order. doesn't always get posed in that <laughs> calm way as you just stated. What well, would be um, a good way for the ladies at home that are in my situation? Uh, I think you. W- I don't know about giving specific lines, but what I would say about it is like try to be in the other person's shoes. So they might not think like you or feel like you, but how do they think and feel? If you know that person, you'd be like, wait a minute, mm-hmm. they have concerns that I don't. Let me acknowledge those concerns. Oh, mm-hmm. such good advice. You know? Yeah. Um, that's the hard part is like making sure, because we think, you know, at least me, uh, the world revolves around mm-hmm. us. Uh, you know, my thoughts are everyone's thoughts, and that's hardly the case. Mm-hmm. You literally have to step outside yourself and say, wait a minute, you know, just because I don't give a damn, <laughs> that doesn't mm-hmm. mean that someone else might not yeah. about certain things and communicating. So mm-hmm. it is. it was painful. I'm not I know this sounds terrible. You had to, to say. really work at like, doing that. Like, I have that. to, like, schedule uh, an alarm to say, check in. <laughs> Or else I'd mm-hmm. still continue to work. I would rather yep. put it oh, I, into the Can work. I tell my husband mm-hmm. that one? <laughs> Marquise, you're a uh, communicator. Mm-hmm. Well. <laughs> you must have been in this situation before with, with ladies that were not great communicators. Or Well, I'm one of those where I, I'm like Solomon, except for all my wives have been work wives. And LaPresa <laughs> King is actually one of my, my first work, work wife. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And what I know is that I'm a gentleman. And that every woman has a different style of communication. Mm-hmm. And I've worked in management and in marriages. So I asked them, how do you want to communicate with me? That's great. And what does love feel like? Because some people, for me, if I send you a handwritten note and you got that note, because I took the time to think of you and get a stamp and a letter, people nowadays think that's the bee's knees thing in the world. Mm-hmm. Or like I did for a certain somebody that was uh, having a, a difficult time transitioning out of being in that mom mode. And they're thinking mom stuff, book a hotel, book an Airbnb. And I'm like, that's not what you called me for. What is your fantasy? And so that we can have a conversation like that, which was different than the kind of conversation she has with her kids or that she would have with her husband after they've fallen into the routine. Because after a while, you want to get out of that routine. You want to find something new and something a little energetic that gives you that spice of life back. I think people just want to be thought about. Mm-hmm. Are you thinking uh, about me? Mm-hmm. Or are you just thinking about other things in yourself? Or whatever, you know? Do you love me? Yeah, do you <laughs> love me? Yeah, seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but it, it, it is that serious. You think that it's no big deal, especially if you're in a relationship already. Like, got it. This is on lock. I'm, let me just live my life. Well, your life is part of that person's part of it. You know, and it's easy to forget that. So right. don't forget who you love and mm-hmm. care about someone. Think about them. So if, mm-hmm. you, if, if you do think about them, I think what my wife was uh, used to talk about when I was busy or was busy, when I, <laughs> we first tried to get me into checking in while I'm busy, was that um, uh, uh, do, you, do you want to express this caring in a way that I can see it and hear it? You may say you're thinking about me, but how do I know it? Mm-hmm. That part was eye-opening. How do I know it? 
I was like, oh. Well, that gets oh. into love languages, doesn't yeah. it? Because mm -hmm. also, I'm not, uh, like, words of affirmation is not is not my top love language. Like, I'm acts of service. So mm. uh, when I was saying earlier, he needs to tell me that mm -hmm. he uh, he did, he took the, the dog to the vet and that he did the dishes. I, I don't need that check in because mm -hmm. I already know because I was looking for that. And that was his, that's my way of seeing. Oh, yeah, you do love me. Right, you went right. to the grocery store. <laughs> yay! But I know. Oh, Marquise has a question or a comment. Oh, yeah. This is one of those things <laughs> where you got to do a level set because if you and your other half ain't worked out what the terms of success are, yeah. you can move heaven, earth, the moon and everything else. And it wasn't a thing that she asked for. It don't matter. So if it wasn't on her checklist, you did everything in the world, but it wasn't on the checklist. I think that's why a lot of relationships do fall apart because mm. people are they're, they're speaking different love, love languages. Mm -hmm. They have different expectations and they're not expressing that. I want to go back over to Laprisa because I think also your situation is different from uh, some of the listeners of, of Dates and Mates that don't have kids. When you have to find love and you have many other responsibilities, you're responsi responsible for these other young lives, it is a challenge to fit that in. So, you know, we're talking about rem reminders and fitting in talking to your partner, but when you're dating, it seems like something that you also need to look at your schedule and, and plan out. What would you say some of the other challenges are in dating as a single mom? So yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm always in mommy mode and my kids come first. So mm -hmm. with me, I've taken the time to come out of mommy mode and try to pursue things. But what happens is you find that it's not worth the time. So mm -hmm. when you're trying to separate the, the good from the bad, well, I, I said the dogs from the vultures when dating. <laughs> and <laughs> Wait, wait, yeah. which yeah, one of those is the good the, one? Exactly. The dog. Is oh, no, good. no. Dog, we have to yeah. add one more option. <laughs> <laughs> nope, can we, the dog is good. Can we add the like a, a, a the, the dog is the good the one. The dogs are still dogs. <laughs> so okay. here's, here's my take on that. We might need to adjust I'm not that. Say but all go men ahead. are dogs, but they have a little dog in them. <laughs> and it's just my thought. Mm -hmm. What so. if Laprisa, what if that was that was a belief? What was I, I talked to my clients about I do a lot of yoga. And I talk about patterns, samskaras, mm -hmm. that there, these are pa patterns, good or bad, words that you repeat to yourself that may be keeping you stuck in one, one path, one line of thinking. And what if you change the samskara? What if you rewrote that mm -hmm. philosophy mm -hmm. and then aimed to prove your new hypothesis correct rather than looking for ways to confirm the hypothesis that you have? Mm. That's a great thought. And I've tried, I've ventured out there in changing, you know, my negatives to positives. Um, but in your but mind, too. Yeah, it, but in your mind, too. Just um, yeah, just myth, starting yeah. with replacing that narrative in your head. Uh -huh. That that starts to create the the path for you to to date differently. But mm -hmm. I get the time thing that. That is real. And I always say to my clients, time is your most valuable resource. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it is, you're not getting any more of it. Right. Right. So who you choose to spend your time with really does matter. But I think sometimes when you date from this perspective of time is running out or there isn't enough time, then it, it kind of gets you into this, this mindset of, of scarcity, of like, mm -hmm. well, there isn't enough, so this isn't worth it. I mm -hmm. don't have the time to go down this mm -hmm. path uh -huh. and explore. So my question is, how clear are you, Laprisa, on how on the person that you would like to meet and who would fit into this life that you've built? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. So I'm probably like 50% clear. And ju that's just because I know that over the last uh, two, three years where my kids were getting older and I thought they were going to be out the way more. Mm -hmm. They're in the way a lot more. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they getting into trouble. Um, <laughs> yeah, so taking time to get to know people and find out what I really want. I mm -hmm. was married before. And so just now trying to figure out how do I not fall back into where I was and 
getting to know someone else. I'm about 50% knowing that I want somebody better than my ex husband. Mm hmm. What if you were to blue sky it? What if you were to say, not in relation to your ex, but in a perfect scenario, what would that man look like? Uh, He would be understanding and Mm -hmm. very uh, nurturing to the fact that I, you know, have been a single parent for quite a while and Mm -hmm. my kids come first and I have all these other goals and aspirations and Mm -hmm. I need you to support them as I would do you. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And you know what I love? what What I love about what you just said is that you really focused in on values and Mm -hmm. that is really the biggest factor in determining long-term compatibility, Mm -hmm. like having someone that has common values and common goals for the future. How do you bring that up during dating? Like people talk about superficial things all the time, but values, even if you're dating someone long-term sometimes, certain values don't come up until like the M word pops up. How do you bring up topics like that? Well, a lot of it is, first of all, in practicing slow love. And this is why the time thing is so crucial to understand that it does take time to for a relationship to unfold and to really get to know someone so in this rapid world like at the beginning i was saying we're all swiping and emailing and dming and things are happening so rapidly that we're all in a hurry to get to that phase and to get that information right away and it it has to unfold over time you know mm-hmm. it takes 3 months 6 months for you to get some of this information cuz you you it's it's not like an interview <laughs> like right. like Well, let me go down this checklist. But I'll tell you, uh, from an interview perspective, one of the best ways to tell uh, tell what someone's future behavior is, there's future again, Mm -hmm. is to look at their past behavior. Mm -hmm. And so finding out once you're a little further down the line, how people have behaved in the past in relationships. Like if you know they've been engaged six times and they've broken it off every time, you have a valuable piece of information Mm -hmm. there. And a lot of the the, the values the, and the qualities that you need to see, those are in in action more than they are in what people tell you. And to see how much they, what they say aligns with mm-hmm. what they're actually doing. Mm-hmm. Marquise, I feel like you wanted to add to that. <laughs> well, there's a trick that happens. There's Some people want things to be slowly rolled out, and that's for people who have time. Those of us that don't, out just give me a sheet of paper with your histories, your credit reports, the things you've done, and all that stuff. What's your house? And then we, you and I, I look at you, I like you. Let's figure out our styles, and we can rock and roll. I don't need all that to make. It, I need all that to make a decision. And then once I make a decision, we're moving. What happens is, in this text age, everybody's trying to spoon feed out because that's what they need because they get overwhelmed. Uh-huh. Those of us that don't get overwhelmed, just give me the information. I can make a decision. Yes or no. Sure. But you really need to spend like science shows. You do need to spend time with somebody and getting to know them for the overall for relationship success. Yes, there are the stories of the people that, you know, one of my closest friends, she was with her husband 10 days and he mm-hmm. proposed and they've been together now over 10 years. Mm-hmm. But that's the exception and not the rule. So. I'm so I coach on what is the most likely path for success mm-hmm. for you. And and you're gathering the information, but it's it's also about the connection because somebody can be right on paper. Mm-hmm. I know you know this, mm-hmm. Dwayne. Somebody mm-hmm. can be right on mm-hmm. paper and yet they're not they're not a match. Well, yeah. Well, as the, you really know them. The paper just does one thing. Like I've had I do dates differently than anybody else. I do interviews differently than mm-hmm. anybody else. I met Dwayne, and somebody said he's a recommendation. We called in. He's in. And he's the p- people that recommended him were amazing. He walked in the room. I met him. We talked. I got it. He's good. <laughs> the, that, but yeah, I but you're not marrying him. I you're everyone. But I'm saying <laughs> I'm going to be talking with him about starting an improv school together. That's <laughs> literally, you know, that is a business relationship. That's a marriage. But that's what we do nowadays. A marriage is a contract that I got your back. You got mine. Mm-hmm. You have my kids, and I will watch over them. And if somebody tries to mess with us, I will stomp through. And I don't care who you married to right now. You and I, like, this is future talking to Ciara. Mm-hmm. Look, <laughs> that little future is mine. That means for here on out for the rest of our lives, we are tied together, no matter who is laying next to you. Mm-hmm. So 
what he is saying is like, that is my son and he going to do whatever because he now wants to get Ciara back. That's truly what's going on. Or, well, or he's just <laughs> wants to be a good dad he's as well, by salty, the way. Probably hopefully. Just salty. Well, he's, he's just salty. salty. He's but just like, like it's, hopefully he wants to be a good dad. Like, I don't know what that is in terms of their relationship. Sure. But in terms of the man thing, it's it's that piece of wanting to be able to like it, it's it's you're right in terms of the scientific evidence of a relationship you need time for that to build but an arranged marriage has higher rates of success and lower rates of divorce and those people yeah, don't know they each can't other get out of I was going to say yes. exactly <laughs> but they learn to what they do is love is a chemical they reaction get, they just get married it's like married at first sight they just get married but and and my sister-in-law her parents had an arranged marriage mm -hmm. so i i know mm -hmm. this intimately mm -hmm. well they they do spend time getting to know each other. It's mm -hmm. just they can't get out of it yeah. so that easily. Like a so they have to make it work. What, what I prefer is a promise mm -hmm. to Aww. each other. You know? Yeah. That's so it sweet. is a contract, but that's it's so just it's different. It, that's more personal. If it was less, I don't know, stiff or mm -hmm. clinical in some way. When you're making a promise to each other, you look each other in the eye and you believe that person because mm -hmm. you know them. So let's make a promise for 2019 mm -hmm. because we are all super, super busy. Mm -hmm. What would your promise be, Dwayne, mm -hmm. to your wife? Mm -hmm. In how in in your busy schedule you're going to continue to make time for her and make her feel valued. The times in between things where it's too not enough time to drive all the way back home, but enough time where I can we can actually connect. I'm gonna do more connections between those times this year than mm -hmm. I did last year. Because there were times where I'm like More FaceTime? More FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> more FaceTime. More Look face to that. face time is a godsend. Or it a started out to call it, but as a yeah. challenge, and now it's 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 what <laughs> you're like, asking yeah, for. Yeah, exactly. Wow, good, Marquise. What is your your dating goal for 2019 with with this dating while busy focus in mind? Uh, one, I'm going to actually spend some time on dating and getting to know some amazing people that I know, <laughs> and maybe even have some vacations with some amazing women that I know. That's a B. If I don't get married to AOC by this time next year, <laughs> I'm going to propose to somebody because if I want to run for office, you gotta you can't run for office as a single straight man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. I like you can't. Single straight men are out. You okay. Can, yeah, you can do what you I, want. I literally I, I tried <laughs> to run for office last year <laughs> and they were like, mm, you can't because you're a single straight man. And the guy who was in that office had a me too. So you're going to be done if you try to run for that seat oh. against a woman. All right. Okay. We we see where, your, where your head's at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's get you sure. a partner, a business partner <laughs> slash wife. La Prisa, <laughs> what is your, your dating goal? You're dating while busy. So in 2019, what's something that you promise to yourself you'll do a little bit differently? I am going to be more open-minded, and I'm going to actually make time to date. Mm-hmm. <gasps> We've made progress hey. in today's episode. I hope that inspires some of the people listening at home. We do have your questions that are coming up right after this, but I do want to give a big thank you to Laprisa King. You can find her on IG at such a FN lady 13 or Twitter at Lady Hicks 711. Right? I got that right? Correct. Okay, yeah. look out for that lingerie line, girls. Yeah. Keeping it hot. Thank you, Laprisa. Thank you all. Bye, Take Ms. Care. Good luck, LaFrieza. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you all. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Dwayne. Dwayne Colbert. You can follow him on Twitter at just like Stephen, S T E P H E N. Hey. You know, like the Colbert. <laughs> just like Stephen on Twitter. He's also on Instagram at dcolbert01. And he has an upcoming show at Second City called Shade. If you are in LA, definitely check out the Second City website, Second City. Dot com and you can see this funny man in action but he's funny but he also has a good heart he's a good husband and mm -hmm. we've I've learned I've learned from you so thank you for sharing your insights <laughs> oh, with wow. us mm -hmm. oh, this is great awesome you guys are amazing thank you for having me thank you yeah. okay we have your questions in the next segment so producer Leah let's hit it with technically dating technically dating all right, one of our listeners, Marquis, says, mm -hmm. my millennial niece links her Instagram and Snapchat in her Twitter bio. Mm. Should I do the same, she wonders? It's funny, I was just looking at a profile yesterday, mm -hmm. and she had Instagram linked. 
And I went, mm, I don't know. I don't know if that's the right choice. I, I, I look at a lot of profiles. You look at them from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. What do you think as a dater? As a dater, it depends on, well, it depends on what trying to... Dating is like fishing. You got to figure out what you're trying to catch. If you're trying to catch yourself a shark, you don't use worms. If you're trying to catch yourself a catfish, then you use a worm. You had the best with analogies. Okay. So if you okay. want a, vi- a person that's beautiful and visual and you're a beautiful and visual person, then you link your Snapchat and you link your Instagram because that's going to say what you are because it's two beautiful people looking at each other. But if you are funny, your Snapchat, I mean, your, your, what's going to hit you is your Twitter because they want to see your wit. They want to see your mind. Yes, but here's my concern. I feel like we we were talking about mm-hmm. time and moving so quickly and getting mm-hmm. to know each other and revealing things that you wouldn't necessarily reveal if you if you were face to face with someone. And when you link your Instagram or your Snapchat, it is a it is either a business venture that you mm-hmm. are putting info out and that's not a dating venture mm-hmm. or it is a sort of private private semi-private space for you to connect with your friends. And there are things that you would say to your friends that you wouldn't necessarily say to a lover. There are things that you would say in a business setting that you wouldn't necessarily say to a lover. So to me, it's commingling the waters. I would rather, because like you're going to go, if you're trying to meet somebody at Mm -hmm. the club, you're going to go dressed a certain way. I Mm -hmm. look at dating on apps as the same way. Mm -hmm. You you want to show up for the purpose that you're there for, because all that information, mm-hmm. if you if that person starts going down the rabbit hole of your Instagram, they're going to find some information that they didn't want to see. They're mm-hmm. going to find something that's going to make them say no, or mm-hmm. something that makes them draw a conclusion about you mm-hmm. that you don't want out there that early in the relationship. Oh, I do, because I want to save time. Want if, I know, if but you go back through my stuff, because I ain't, I can't change my past. I can't change stuff that I've done. And what's going to happen is you're going to find out anyway. I'd rather know in the beginning and then not have to deal with this and be like, good, I didn't waste five years of my life because you went back and saw an Instagram post. Yeah, but, okay. But I mean, if, if you look if at... If their posts are public, aren't they going to like try to look gonna for They're going to Google it anyway. anyway. Sure, they can, sure. but but it's, it's the forum that you're on. Yeah. So they're like swiping and deciding, do I want to start a chat with this person? Right. And you can draw somebody in and get somebody to know you mm before they start to formulate all these opinions mm-hmm. about you. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really a mistake for people mm-hmm. to go down the the Instagram, Snapchat. Because mm-hmm. that's not who you are. It's, it's not your who public you are. Face. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's not what you want to get to know when you want to meet someone. You don't want to don't want to just get to know their public face. You yeah. want to acknowledge it and see if that's something you want to venture further with, but that alone is not, I don't think that should be the honey. I always that's, say that's you can, yeah, yeah, you can Google someone or look at their, their Instagram, but you don't want to go so far through it that mm-hmm. it takes out that discovery. And oh, that's yeah. the thing that I think is important in your dating process. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I'm just saying. I understand you. you. Because <laughs> I, understand I wouldn't, if, if you want to just be hot, don't put all that stuff out there. Because that's, if, you, if you're a good looking person and that's the best you got and that's your, that's your lick. Then that's what you should, don't, don't show everybody else your laundry. You're right. Okay. I have one more question before we wrap up the show. My client Tracy asks, have you ever heard of sending the first message as a disadvantage to women? Like it takes away the idea of a guy pursuing you. I have my opinions, Marquise. We have two minutes. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion? I think this is one of those areas that Demona is right on. Why, ladies, aren't you guys sending that first message? You guys have. The truth is, I am very successful. The truth is, most women I end up dating are more successful than me. But I end up paying, and I end up being the one that asks them out. Mm-hmm. They uh, make more money. So, yeah, you just said what my opinion is. Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't know where we got this idea that sending an initial message upsets the rules of chival- chivalry. It's actually in alignment with mm-hmm. the rules of chivalry because always men would look for a an opening before. You're not going to go up and talk to mm-hmm. a woman if she's like, you know, her head's in a book and she's looking like she doesn't want to be be bothered. If she looks up and she makes eye contact with you and she smiles at you or she seems like she's 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 friendly and she's having a good time, that's a woman that you're going to say, oh, I could approach her and we could have a conversation and see where it goes. And I think it's the same thing online. It's just making you visible to him. I don't think it rewrites the rules of chivalry or upsets the balance of the sexes. 
Well, I think that part of it is a lot of times people, in the old days, you just had to interrupt somebody reading a book in order to meet because we didn't have phones. We didn't have a dating app. So that's how people But now met. that's such an imposition. But what if you don't have a date? Like, this is part of the DWB. If I decide I don't want to have a phone and I don't want to have a date app because I want to meet people in real life and I don't want to become one of the walking dead. But you're not here. I'm saying that the the... In that mm. instance, you're not just walking up to people mm. and saying like, hello, hello. Mm. You're waiting for some sort of mm. nonverbal or verbal invitation mm. that it's that that she is open to a conversation right like now. It's like a power, power play. Like yeah. People want to play it's always games been with like, that. like, yeah, mm. you know, are you going to first? It's, you know, who's the one that shows interest? Play. Who's vulnerable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. But there, there is a difference between between sending the first message mm -hmm. and you know the dropping of the mm -hmm. hanky as they did in the olden mm -hmm. days mm -hmm. and you pursuing him. There's definitely a difference. So sure. you can send the initial message. Don't follow up three times if you didn't hear from him and it's then just an ask him. It's, it's an just an invitation, invitation to, to a conversation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Dwayne mm -hmm. said it better than I could <laughs> say it myself. That is what we got for episode, what is this, 243 of Dates and Mates. You can tell me. You can talk to me. You can tell me your dating and relationship troubles uh, mm. because we would like to give you answers on a future show. You can email me, Demona at DemonaHoffman.com. Mm. I'm on social media on all of them at Demona Hoffman. Give me a call. Leave me a voicemail, 424-246-6255. Also, don't forget to get your copy of the February issue of Oprah's O Magazine. I'm oh, going to yeah. get it out. It was real dope. Let me tell you, I read that article. And I instantly used some of those things. I got it right here. And I will say, everything in there is really helpful. Yes, this has a four-page description of what it's like to coach with me. I coached one of their editors for about a month, and her dating life changed. You can read all about it in the February issue of O Magazine. Thank you so much for listening to another action-packed episode of Dates and Mates. If you love the show, please leave us a review. Please share. Tell somebody else about the show. We can spread more love, heal more hearts, and help people have a fantastic Valentine's Day and not a fantastic divorce month. Mm -hmm. We'll see you again next week. Until then, I wish you happy dating. Get some love.